but they're reconstructing it and they did it from 442 human burials from a, from Sweden from Denmark wow. from Estonia and it starts it's only the beginnings but it starts to show a picture and the picture it shows is exactly at one level what we would expect because these were trading raiding slaving people who, who were going traveling long distance it's showing us that not only were the, was the Viking Age a time where Scandinavians started contributing to the DNA of other regions of Europe, but also it was a time where Scandinavia started to become more diverse. And indeed, in a follow-up study that, um, by another group of researchers published in Cell in 2023, um, they were able to show that actually Scandinavia was more ethnically, um, popular, genetically diverse, sorry, genetically diverse in the viking age than it is now now when wow. we say g- genetically diverse some people t- mean that it would be like walking down um fifth avenue in new york city and there'd be people from all no no it doesn't necessarily mean there are literally some kind of some um <laughs> modern tv same show where t- they've got same tone the, same tone yeah, for different genetics yeah 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 i mean pe- we're talking about people generally from northern a bit of eastern a bit of western right. europe but, but, but the point is, there was no single Viking people speaking one language, all going around going, I am Viking, and having the same hair colour and the same beards. They, well, although there's probably always one of those, and even at the time, probably people were rolling their eyes and going, oh, God, he's at it again. You know, <laughs> but, but, um, but my point is, it would have really, the population was always in flux. And this DNA study is obviously, is, one level, it's good to debunk the most lunacy of the extremist supremacists who like to really fantasize about these these noble pure white northerners who were nothing of the kind um, right. because it, but also it's really important because it's showing that that genetic makeup of the scandinavia was never not it was always in flux it was always accepting new people in it was always pushing new people out and so this dna which is work, the story of the ancient world exactly and again as i said not really a revelation but it's really right. important and it's adding some details like some of these genetic studies are showing that some of the people we're finding buried in the same boat graves in estonia who went on the same viking raid were brothers you know it's giving us little insights into that you know and obviously that viking raid didn't go so well because they all ended up dead in a boat <laughs> and the and, but my point right. is, you know the point is it's do it's giving us a you know, real insight. And it's also showing us that, I'll give you a good, another example, some of the burials where people are being buried as Scandinavians with grave goods in, in, in boats in Orkney, their DNA is showing that they're basically locals. They're picked. They're the descendants of the, the native people that are already there. So to use a yeah. crude North American analogy, you know, you, you're excavating some graves from a colonial cemetery, and this, always, this happens all the time when archaeologists have been excavating, and surprise, surprise, it's full of people who have native ancestry, who have you know, African ancestry, because no, these colonies weren't just full of white people. You know, they weren't full of Northern Europeans. So you know, it's, it's the same point, is that people obviously are being integrated into these societies from the first generation onwards. And you know, a couple of, couple of decades in, you're burying the dead with people who actually, most of their, you know, if you, their identities, they never saw themselves biologically. Now, people weren't defining themselves by biology, but, but the, you know, in right. terms of the burial practice, they've adopted the new ways. They're, they're being integrated into that Scandinavian linguistic cultural world. So, you know, this is why it's so exciting and important. So I, I don't want to dis, uh, you know, archaeogenetics. There are some serious problems and we need bigger samples and new research, but it's a really exciting field. And it will field. get better. It will get better. But what we need to be careful yes. of is making sure that we, we know the problems and how it's being perceived in pop culture. Um, and, and, you know, um, there's so much misinformation. Another study that went really crazy a couple of years ago was a study done of the late Viking town of Sigtuna in Sweden. And Sigtuna is a wonderful place to mm-hmm. visit today. It's, a, it's actually, you can still walk down medieval streets. I mean, the buildings are more recent, but the, the layout of the town goes back to the 11th and 12th century. And it's, you've got the ruined churches that were built by the first Christian converts, you know, it really is like stepping back in time. Stunning. And when they've done the excavations of the cemeteries there and they've looked at the, the, the DNA of the population, 
only about one third of the sample were local. The rest of the people were either from the rest of southern Scandinavia or from the Baltic, from, you know, Slavs. Um, they're, they're, they're coming from Anglo-Saxon England. They're coming from Francia. So, yes, what, you know, again, not a massive revelation. It's a massive trading town linked to a royal, the, the Swedish, the early Swedish Christian kings had their royal seat right next door. So it's hardly surprising. But, you know, it kind of gives you that evidential base to start with confidence saying, these were Scandinavia in the Viking Age was really mixed with people coming from all over the Viking world to trade, settle, intermarry, you know, it, it, and, and obviously some of those people are slaves or start their lives as slaves. But other people are merchants. Other people are, you know, having you know, ma diplomatic marriages amongst the elite. So it's across the, the, the class spectrum. You, you, you're seeing the flow of people. And that's really exciting. Yeah. So Viking, it was more of a cultural, it was more of a culture than the way I, than any. Yeah, I mean we. I mean, the way I phrase it, which is a bit complicated, but I try to <clears> simplify <throat> it, is I say Vikings is like a a social, cultural, and economic network 